Is We Geordi my favorite movie of all time? No, but it is on the short list. This charming British comedy is a film I grew up with and has always remained close to my heart. Geordie McTaggart is the only son of a gameskeeper who works on the estate of a Scottish laird. The fact that the Scottish laird is played by the great Alistair Sim is just one of the movie's many pleasures. Geordie is a puny lad, and he's constantly being made fun of because of his size. One day, he spots an ad for a bodybuilding course in the local newspaper, and he sends away for the lessons. When I was a kid, it was the Charles Atlas ads in the back of comic books that got my attention. Here, the screenwriters have a lot of fun with the British equivalent. The appeal strikes deep for most of us, the self-confidence that comes from being fit. Now, I hate working out, but I sure do like the feeling of walking tall and steady. After years of diligent exercise, Geordie grows into a strapping giant of a fellow now played by Bill Travers. American audiences probably remember him best from such films as Gargo and Born Free. I also remember him from a tiny gem of a film called The Smallest Show on Earth which also features a young Peter Sellers playing an old movie projectionist. While out on the grounds one day, Jordy and his dad chase off a couple of poachers who've just killed a deer. While dragging the deer back to the estate, a storm breaks out and Jordy's dad has a heart attack. Jordy picks up his dad, slings him across his shoulders, and walks the three miles back home in a raging storm. Later, on his deathbed, his father bequeaths Geordie his black watch kilt. Geordie's girlfriend, Jean, tries to comfort him by mentioning the kilt, but Geordie replies, I don't want my dad's kilt. I want my dad. Soon after, however, He's made the head gameskeeper, and life goes on. But Mr. Sampson, Geordie's coach and mentor all these long years, tells him he should specialize in his athletic endeavors. To that end, he might try letting national characteristics lead the way. The Scots, for example, like to throw things. The caber, for instance. Have you ever seen a caber? It's basically a telephone pole. Geordie, however, takes up the hammer. One day, out in the field, practicing his throw, he nearly kills the lad who's been in a bush bird watching. But when the lad measures the distance of the throw, he takes it in mind to give Geordie a few lessons. But lad or not, he's got a chicken arm. He winds up nearly killing the local pastor who just happens to be bicycling by. Fortunately, Pastor McNabb is a former athlete, and he teaches Geordie the proper form. Soon, impressed with Geordie's progress, the pastor and the laird encourage Geordie to enter the local games. Unfortunately, Geordie's girlfriend, Jean, has been dismissive of his efforts all these years. But it's Jean's appearance in the hills above the local games, where Geordie's doing badly, that turns the tide. She calls out to him, Come away, my wee Geordie, come away. And he wins the tournament. Soon after, he's visited by a couple of scouts from Britain's Olympic team. Raymond Huntley, a veteran of countless British films from that era, plays one of the Olympic scouts. He also has the distinction of playing Dracula on stage more than any other actor. So, Geordie sets sail for Australia where the Olympic Games are being held. 
aboard ship, he becomes friends with Helga, a female Danish shot putter, who's also very popular with the Norwegian team and the French team and, and so on. The team managers are not too happy about that, nor are they happy about the fact that Geordi intends to wear his dad's black watch kilt during the games. After arriving in Australia, Geordi decides to take a wee peek at Melbourne with the intention of buying a hat for Jean, his girlfriend, back home. Suddenly, there's a car accident right outside the hat store and Geordi single-handedly lifts the car off a man who's been run over and becomes something of a local hero. During the opening parade of athletes, the band strikes up the Scottish national anthem as Geordi walks out in his kilt. It's a great moment for him and a great moment for us as we get to cheer him on along with the audience in the stands. Now, back home, Everyone is sitting around the Laird's den listening to the games on the radio. But Geordi isn't doing very well. In fact, one more bad throw and he's out. And then, when all seems lost, Jean leans forward and whispers into the radio, Come away, my wee Geordi, come away. And Geordi, being fey as all true Scots are, as a vision of her above the Don Feckin Hills. And of course, Geordi wins and the crowd goes wild. And so does Helga as she jumps into his arms. And back home, Jean, who has heard all of this on the radio, is devastated. Finally, when Geordi does return home, He's surprised to find that the village has snubbed him because of his dalliance with Helga and the pain it's caused Jean. Trying to make it up to her, of course he makes it worse by saying he was thinking of her the whole time. Jean gets some of her own back when she lashes out that she wasn't thinking of Geordie when she was kissing Jock McKenna the other night. Geordie, of course, resorts to type by saying, what were you doing with Jock McKenna? You're my girl. And then Jean confesses that she wasn't really kissing Jock McKenna and that Geordie should have known better. That yes, she is his girl. Game, set, and match. Well, maybe not by today's standards, but it'll do. So in the end, if you like charming, romantic sports fantasies, this film's a natural. See you around the campus.